The following is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, I think it's a great time to start the show. Let's okay. <laughs> what is up, everybody? You are tuned into the Thickness Protection Program. This is the podcast celebrating body positivity and where adult stars come to open up about whatever the fuck. Today, I am excited to welcome a hardworking MILF, a performer, a jack of many trades, a all-around hustler. Miss Kylie BBW is in the house. Hey, what's up, guys? Gay area. You know, thank Kylie. You so much. Oh, thank you're welcome. You're welcome. I've been excited for this one. I believe this may be the most important episode of the show I have recorded yet. And the reason being is because you bring so much to the table from, you know, your many hustles, your story, how you got into business in 2013, and all the things you do, you know, as as a single mother and as somebody who was, you know, willing to or able to do whatever she can to provide. So we're going to get into it. You know, we spoke a few weeks ago on live, and I think I just got, you know, a little spoonful of who you are. Right. So it's time to really, you know, dive into that and just elaborate on the day one story of Kylie BBW. Perfect. Yeah, I'm happy to talk to you guys and share a little bit about how I got here, how I got into the industry. You know, it's been a long road. It's been a long road. Right. Okay. So exactly. you grew up in you Redding, up California? Uh, yes and no. Um, I started in Red Bluff. But when I was an adolescent, like I, you know, I didn't really know when I was younger, like what mental health issues I had. So when I was an adolescent, those kind of started coming out. So like between 12 and 13, like my family started passing me around. And then um, from 13 until 15, I kind of stayed by myself a little bit. Um, my, my dad was living with his wife and my mom was living with her husband and they, you know, said I had behavior issues. So I lived in a travel trailer by myself in a trailer park in Eureka. Yeah. So really? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I stayed there. And then uh, one summer I went with my aunt and to stay in Vegas, like just to visit. And I told her like what was going on. Like, yeah, I basically, you know, stayed by myself in the trailer. And she was like, the fuck. So I ended up going with her and we had intentions of staying in Vegas. But then um, my my grandma ended up getting sick. So we moved to Oregon to help with her and I kind of finished high school in Oregon and even though I was with my family, when you're in a situation where somebody is dying, it, you're kind of independent, you know, it's like I my grandparents helped me but they were, my grandpa was helping my grandma so I had to fend for myself um so that's kind of how like high school and then by 17 I was graduated and I was just really out on my own but I moved so many places on that time I lived in Eureka I lived in Walnut Creek I lived in Reno I lived in Las Vegas um and then I ended up in Southern Oregon which is where I finished school so you know it was it was a different times back then. Like my family was so embarrassed by the concept that I might be like in foster care or in the system that it was less embarrassing for them to like kind of like pass me around or tuck me off in a trailer by myself, you know, then be like, oh, maybe, she, maybe she needs some help. I don't know. I, I had a lot of things happen in my youth, but I try to generally always be optimistic. So I'd be like, oh, those are character builders. Cause it's like, that's how I got to where I am today. And I hope that somewhere on my path, like I live a life of advocacy. Like I hope I get like really bloody rich doing something. And then I could just spend my life being like some rich philanthropic lady going around helping you know causes and stuff um but yeah it was a bumpy road to get here dog <laughs> absolutely I feel like you know you said it best bumps and bruises you know grow into you know the people that we ultimately want to be so mm -hmm. you know um I don't want to give to throw out too many like pat phrases but um okay so escorting was your original path into the porn business and whatnot so tell me when did that first you know appear in your life 
Okay, so I have mental health issues. And when you are manic, you are hypersexual. So I was being a slut. And I went to Oakland, right? And when you're a slut in Oakland, everyone kind of insinuates that you're a renegade hoe. Now, I had been in the game before, but I had been in the game selling crack. I had never been in the game selling pussy. So when this seed had been planted so many times, and then I ran out of my own money, I'm like, okay, well, let me see. So I went on Craigslist and I like responded to this ad and like my first date was kind of rough. It was like the, he, this guy was much bigger than me. He had some problem with his mom. So he was like kind of beating me up a little bit. It was like very physically rough, you know, but then like when that, after that's your first date, it's like all downhill from here, you know? Um, so, and I came on when like back page was a thing it's, or like not back page, but my red book. So it was much easier to post back then. And, um, I was, okay. What year, what year are we talking? Sorry to interrupt. Like 2013. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 So, that's when you started. Sorry. Yeah. And so like I was in the California Bay area and the women that were BBW women that were posting there were generally women that had very large breasts and not any ass still white hmm. women but women with big titties and no ass so when i started posting there i was making so much fucking money like it was easy a regular day was a thousand dollars at least you know all the way up to 2500 but like in the bay area like i was the i felt like the first person with my body type right posting and I am actually, I'm from Northern California, but I don't actually live in the Bay Area. My persona is from there. Like people who are really from there are like, you gentrifying ass bitch. You're like, you're a, just a gentrifier hoe. No, Oakland has a whole prostitution story that owes its own dues and respect. Yeah. But, I was kind of okay. curious about that because, you know, pimping and hoeing is really a part of Oakland culture. Yeah, and you know. that they, they have their own story that is independent of Kylie Marie Cisneros. I just happened to have... Did ended. you just drop the government? Uh, it was an accident. Oh. But, I mean, really, it's, it's not hidden that well. Oh, God. I didn't, I didn't know about my brain issues, so I really should have made up a name that was not my regular name when I started in video, but I didn't. So I am really Kylie. That's, like, really my name.